Hello, everyone. This is JP with REITips.com, and I've got Eric Stark with the Michigan Property Superstore with me here on the line. And uh, I have asked Eric to uh, let me do a little video with him highlighting a document that he uses in his real estate investing business on a regular basis. You can see it here in front of you. It's called the Option to Purchase Real Estate Agreement. But it's not just any ordinary option agreement. Uh, the words uh, I'm about to say are not on this agreement, but you may have heard it popularly referred to as a flex option. So uh, I'll ask you some clarifying questions, Eric, but I'm just going to turn it over to you, and I would ask you to start before we go through the form by telling me what the heck a flex option really is and what function it serves in your business. Well, JP, thank you for taking some time with me today to go over this, uh, this very, very important that contract that me and Steve use every single day in our business. I want everybody to focus on that word option. Now, this is the option to purchase real estate. This is not a real estate cr uh, contract where it holds you obligated to purchase the property. So what this is is an option to purchase real estate. And a brief scenario on where me and Steve use this is we get a lot of phone calls every day about sellers wanting to sell their properties or other investors who say, hey, I got this deal. I'm not sure what to do with it. Maybe it's not a good enough deal for me and Steve to put a contract to buy it on but what we'll do is say, hey, I got an option to purchase uh, this property. Let me send it over to you with some information. This gives me the ability to go and shop it to my group of buyers, and any amount that I make over what the other investor wants, it allows me to stuff that right in my pocket. And I don't have any obligation. There's no earnest money, none of that deep stuff to, uh, to hold me obligated to buying this property. So we're going to go over this real quick and kind of dissect uh, what we're doing to use this even today. All right. Uh, there may be some people who are licensed who may not have seen my other video on the option agreement that I've used who are looking at this going, what you're about to explain, they may say, you're practicing real estate without a license. So let me just quickly uh, deal with that issue. Uh, when you're going to flip a house, uh, if you're, if you're going to receive a commission, it's not really a commission, if you're going to receive compensation for flipping that house, you have to have an equitable interest. You have to have a principal interest of some sort in that property. This option agreement establishes that principal interest. And if you don't know what those terms mean, don't worry about it. But for those of you who do, that's exactly what this thing does. It gives you the ability to go out and find, look for a new buyer while you know that you have that equitable interest in place during the term of the option. Absolutely. That is actually very, very crucial to this because I know a lot of people don't fully understand the uh that you do have to have some kind of equitable interest to uh, take control of a property. But back to this uh, this important one one page sheet of paper here. It's very very important that you put the date on when you initiate this purchase this option to purchase. If you, if you put it for a couple of days after, it only does hold a value for 14 days or whatever you make a, a value on it. You do want to make sure that you have that date. So let's kind of read through this real briefly, and we're gonna me and JP are gonna kind of cover what this really does for our business. This option agreement is entered between the parties, the optionor, which is usually the person who already has this, and the optionee, the person that you are partially giving up control to so you can take partial possession and start marketing this property, uh, this property to start stuffing some cash into your pocket. So this option agreement is entered in between the parties, optionor and optionee, below in consideration and subject to the following terms and conditions. So the parties that would be involved is obviously us as the seller and then the person who is going to say, hey, give me partial control of this so I can start marketing this to my buyers. And then once I do, if I can bring you a buyer, I make a couple bucks, which is on top of the amount that you already want. So we got some very, very basic information. Who is involved in this? And as you can see down here, it is us as the seller. And then whatever person, let's say we're just going to put JP's name in there as the optionee to take partial control of this. We need to know what property address we are specifically talking about. So obviously you want to put that right here. You just put in 123 Main Street, and this is specific to that property. It doesn't give you option control of everything that we have, just this specific one. Now, let me just clarify, uh, just, just to be, be sure we're really, really crystal clear on this. And this example is you, Michigan Property Superstore, are the owner of the property, the option or the giver of the option, and I am the person who's putting the option on the property and uh, looking to go find a buyer for it, right? And That's absolutely correct, yes. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're just going to put a number on here just for uh, for the viewers here so they do have a rough idea on what we're doing. So right, yeah. I, you have I have my name under the property address there. 
Okay. <laughs> I'm not sure why I did that. <laughs> that button's going all over the place here. But what we have here is just uh, the parties involved are J.P. Moses and or assigned as the optionee and Michigan Property Superstore as the optionor. So what we have did is we have just gave J.P. partial control to take this property at 123 Main Street and start marketing it so he can actually uh, make some money on this transaction. So I tell J.P. that, hey, I want to sell this property for $10,000. So if J.P. sells this thing for twenty. dollars he just made $10,000 of pure profit that he puts in his pocket. As long as I get my amount, I don't care how much money JP makes. Now, we usually have a standard option agreement of, uh, of 14 days on this because we don't want too many people getting partial control of our properties and then just running off with them and just start marketing. And, you know, by the end of the year, we got all these option contracts with no expiration dates. So this is kind of the way that we take upon this. The general terms and conditions are, are as follows. Optionor understands that optionee's intention is to find an end buyer and assign this option agreement to the end buyer for a fee. So I know that if JP finds a buyer, he's going to make his profit based on the amount uh, that, he, that he told his buyer. Condition number two is the optioner understands that optionee is acting as a principal in the transaction and is not a working as a licensed real estate agent or broker representing anyone in the transaction. So, JP, whether you're an agent or not, if you've got a buyer, bring it to me. You know, you're a principal in the transaction. you got full control over that. And that's important because, you know, for me, for me specifically, I am an agent, and I want to be sure and cover and protect myself. Number one, I don't want them to think uh, that I'm hiding anything from these people, so I'm disclosing openly, look, I intend to flip this thing and make a profit, okay? I'm going to, I'm going to tell you that right up front. And then number two, even though I'm an agent – I'm not your agent, and I'm not representing you in this transaction. Or if you're not an agent, and that you're protecting yourself you know, by clarifying that you're not pretending to be an agent. That's correct, yes. And then this next one here, upon the optionee's decision to exercise this option, which means me and JP, if JP, JP brings me a buyer, I agree to move forward in this transaction and close out the deal. Um, a lot of times there does need to be some level of communication because we may get an agreement at the exact same time now we got to figure out which one is, is null and void, which one is valid, and how to move forward. So this is a very, very key term and condition in here. So me and JP have a full understanding on how we're going to get paid and what constitutes an actual sale. Option or may cancel this agreement at any time. And like I was just telling you, if I do find a buyer, it is my duty to call JP and say, hey, stop marketing that property. I do have a buyer. Uh, it's been, he's ready, willing, and able. I have accepted his offer. It is no longer no longer a marketable property. So take it off the market, rip up that option. I got it sold. Optioner agrees to allow the optionee to put signage in the yard advertising the property for sale. So that says JP does have the ability to go over and stick a sign in there saying, hey, call me JP. I'm the one doing the marketing, putting this property out there. Call me so I can get it sold and handle the transaction. If the optionee does not acquire an end buyer to assign this deal within 14 days of acceptance of the option agreement, this agreement becomes null and void. So like I stated up here where the period is 14 days, we generally keep it on a, a, a limit, which usually gives you plenty enough time to market a property and start pulling some buyers from it. That's just kind of why we make sure that every date is on here and we do have a period of 14 days. All parties agree that property is being sold as is present condition unless otherwise noted. Very, very crucial when you're flipping REO contracts these days. A lot of these need repairs. Some of these contracts get a little bit uh, descriptive, and they want you to start doing repairs for the new buyer. We don't do that. When you take possession of this, you are buying it in as-is, present condition, unless somewhere otherwise stated. One very last crucial thing that we put in here is time is of the essence. We don't just want these things stacking up in somebody's fax machine when you get around to marketing it. We want you to get out and start pumping these to your buyers as soon as possible so you can obviously sell more of our properties, and you can put money in your pocket and start building a buyer's list as a result of it. Let me say something about that also, Eric. Uh, legally, when you see time is of the essence in a contract, in addition to conveying that sentiment, it also, what you're saying is, I agree that the dates and deadlines specified on this contract legally matter, and I agree to be legally held to them. Uh, there have been cases in the past where you might hey, say, you know, we're going to close on uh, June 13th, and then when that doesn't happen, uh, people have gotten away with saying, well, you know, I thought that was just kind of a loose, that's we're going to do our best to close by then, but if we don't, we'll figure something else out. 
Uh, time is of the essence is a clause that really kind of helps make sure that those dates are important contractually. Absolutely, absolutely. And anything else that you want to add in here, we do have a, a sixth line to add any kind of comments that you want to maybe add about this property or something specific to a certain kind of deal that you're doing. You want to type it right in here in, in number six just so it is known. And lastly, you're going to have that me and JP do agree. Me as the option E of Michigan Property Superstore, I'm going to sign here. JP is the option or who is going to take partial possession and start marketing this property. Now, when JP takes this and he gets it signed, I need him to immediately fax or email this back to me. So I say, hey, I got another, another person under my army out there selling my properties for us. So it's very, very crucial, just like JP said, that time is of the essence. You agree. You fully understand. Get it back to us. Start doing some marketing. So as a real estate wholesaler, why would you use this agreement? Number one, as we established earlier, it gives you the equitable interest you need to be able to go out and market that property for resale without being an agent to do so, and you need that equitable interest. Uh, you would use this instead of a contract, instead of a purchase agreement, because a, a purchase agreement is a bilateral agreement, meaning you're obligated to buy, the other person's obligated to sell according to the terms and conditions of the contract. An option agreement is a unilateral agreement. The seller is committed to you, but you're not committed to buy. You have the option to buy. However, this actually establishes a whole new breed of option agreement, in my view, because you're removing the risk from the seller's perspective, from the property owner's perspective, because what's their fear? If you say, look, I'm a real estate wholesaler. I want to go try to find somebody else to to uh, sell this to, and I have a pretty good track record. His fear is, well, I don't want you tying my property up, keeping me from finding another buyer out there, uh, maybe at a better price or just somebody who can close faster. Well, by giving them this flex option, you can see from the terms that Eric just outlined, it removes that risk. It, it's an easy, no-brainer solution for them to at least give you, give it a go and give you, arm you with what you need to go out there and try and make something happen to get this house problem off their back. So, uh, thank you. I really appreciate you taking me through this. Thanks for uh, walking through your contract here, and uh, I know that others are going to enjoy. Uh, utilizing it in their own business. Any final thoughts? I certainly advise as many people to find as many deals as they can that are being sold by other sellers, tie it up with this one simple option agreement, and then go out there and start marketing. It's a very entry-level, risk-free way for you to start learning about the business of real estate without having any risk out there throughout the playing field. Thanks, Eric. Last but not least, I should have said this at the beginning, please use this at your own risk. Uh, take this and run it by your local real estate professional or real estate attorney before you use it to see if it needs to be tweaked for your area. Thanks, guys. Thanks, JP.